Introducing to you first, the challenger on my right. He is fighting out of the red corner, wearing green trunks with gold trim. Hailing from Dublin, Ireland, he weighed in at the featherweight limit of 126 pounds. His fine record stands at 3-1 wins, only one loss, with 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the popular Irish featherweight contender, tonight making his first attempt at a world title, introducing Patrick, the Punisher Highland. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with red trim, fighting out of Capitol Heights, Maryland. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 126 pounds, and his record stands at 26 wins, one loss with 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2008 U.S. Olympian. Yes, Tonight sir. making the first defense of his world title, here is the defending WBC featherweight champion of the world, introducing yes, Mr. Gary Russell Jr. Once again, our referee in charge, he is now to give instructions, Danny Chavon. All right, fellas, bring it in, bring it in, let's go. Fellas, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I expect you to obey my commands at all times. Keep the bout clean. Touch them up. Go back to your corners. Good luck. So Danny Chavon provides the final instructions. And after nearly a 13-month wait, we get to see Gary Russell Jr. in action again. Both fighters weighing in at the 126-pound limit. But tonight, Russell Jr. enters the ring at 134, Patrick Highland at 136, picking up 10 pounds in the last day and a half or so. So here we go, WBC featherweight championship on the line. Russell Jr. in the red trunks, the southpaw. Bunch of punches thrown early in the fight, but none of any consequence. Island throwing a couple of jabs and coming up uh, well short, even though he's got a pretty good reach advantage. Six inches to be in fact. Pick him up, he goes up, let's go. Low punch by Russell Jr. Right. Chabon with a warning. Good combination there by the champion. Good left hand right to the body. Island fires back. But it's the Russell power punches that landed in that exchange. Now 
Not much doing here in a lackluster first round. One good combination by Russell Jr. And that's about it. Russell reaching out with that jab, trying to score some points. Throws that jab and lands one there in the final seconds of the opening round. Baby. He's get your jab is key. Take your time, because you got his timing down. He don't got the speed, but he's trying to counter right hand. So you want to you want to faint? Touch the No, you cut him down the right hand by tucking up and punch him out. So you gotta go with this guy. You gotta be in there for the round and put a bit more pressure, make him work a bit more. When you throw his hands up tight, make him work you gotta get this guy tired, okay? Right, jab into him, throw the water, throw the water. You got a jab, okay? When you're jabbing, when you're jabbing, you're going to go into the side. Give me the gum shield. Okay, you're going to be going to the side. Some good advice there from Highland's trainer, Packy Collins, older brother of Stevie Collins. You may remember a former two-time WBO champ. Was also in the corner when Kevin McBride pulled off a stunning upset knockout win of Mike Tyson many years ago. Both fighters trading jabs in the uh, middle of the ring. Neither connected. Highland wanting to use his height and reach advantage to keep Russell at a distance. Russell Jr. showed off that power and hand speed that he's known for that has helped him to become a world champion. Wow. Most people thought Russell Jr. would win this fight. Few thought it would end this quickly. See the school right here? And I'll be sitting there. So Russell Jr. improves to 27 and 1 with his 16th knockout. And it's funny, all 16 now of those knockouts have come in four rounds or fewer. And you can see the Highland family and friends obviously shaken, disappointed. But Highland, at least for now, looks okay. First, a little scary because he was down and he didn't move for a good minute. Okay, let's take a look now at the first knockdown. Body shot and then a crushing right hand. And Highland dropped to his knees. And then here it is from a different angle. First shot maybe a little low, but the right hand right on the button. 
And Highland in rare territory being down for maybe the first time in his career. And here is the second knockdown as Highland absorbs a barrage of power shots. That right hook sends him reeling into the ropes. Here's the second knockdown again from a slightly different angle. Watch the right hook, boom, right there. And then the third flurry of punches by Russell Jr. and the stoppage. Body shot again, setting up a right hook. And that's all it takes this time as a very wobbly Patrick Hyland goes to the canvas. And the referee, Siobhan, has seen enough. The Russell Jr. crowd, of course, ecstatic with the knockout win early in this title fight here at Foxwoods. Patrick's uh, wife, Lorna Hyland. Son, Calum, also uh, on the property, if not here in the theater, just 10 months old. And Russell Jr. hardly works up a sweat, taking out Patrick the Punisher, who didn't punish anyone here tonight in the second round of his first title defense. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. with the official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one minute, 33 seconds in round number two. He is the winner by way of knockout and still the WBC featherweight champion of the world, Mr. Gary Russell Jr. So Gary Russell Jr. at 27, actually he'll be 28 in about six weeks. He'll have something to celebrate on his birthday with a very impressive knockout win, 133 in the second round of Patrick, that was a quick Punisher performance. Highland. Here's Obviously Jim Gray to be pleased. with the champion. Uh, of course, uh, first and foremost, I want to thank everybody back at home that's had the fight party. My mother, I love you. To my babies, Harmony and Gianna, daddy got the W. Um, Why were you so effective so quickly? We put the work in in the gym. We put the work in, we train hard. I get cursed out just about every day by my dad. I feel like I'm the worst fighter sometime uh, leaving the gym. But uh, we're our worst critics. We push ourselves to the limit, and that's why we got, got the win tonight. You probably felt you weren't going to be pushed, but did you expect that it would be this quick and this easy? Um, no, you never know what to expect in a, in, a, in a fight like this. That's the purpose of training camps. You know, uh, we paid for the duration of the fight. We was ready to go 12 rounds, long and hard if it had to. Um, we executed a level of defensive discipline. We stuck to the game plan. We stayed shot, stayed behind the jab, kept them at, at bay. You know, I was able to capitalize on his mistakes. So now we'll look forward. Leo Santa Cruz, Lee Selby, perhaps try and avenge Lomachenko. What would you like to do? De all of that? <laughs> Definitely all of the above. Um, we would love to get uh, the fight against Lee Selby and unify. Uh, we would also love to uh, face uh, Leo Santa Cruz. But please, if you're watching this fight, Lomachenko, you got to see me. It's going down. You believe he'll wait at the, at the weight, or, or he, he says he's moving on? It doesn't matter. We'll weigh these fights. I don't care if he moves up to 147 pounds. I will follow him to whatever weight that he's in to, to get that fight. And there are a lot of other attractive fights, as we just mentioned. If Lomachenko doesn't want it as much as you do, Selby next, maybe? Of course, uh, Lee Selby or uh, Leo Santa Cruz, whichever one. Gary, congratulations. Good to see you back in the ring. Thank you.